In this special Easter episode of Flea Market Rescue, we're going to take a paper mache egg and a candlestick that I got from the thrift store and turn it into Easter royalty. Next, I'll teach you how to make these carrots along with this super cute bunny and bag. And if that's not enough, my mom's back with a few more Easter ideas for you. So if you're ready for this special episode of Flea Market Rescue, then let's go ahead and dive into this week's projects. Just a quick note before we get started, if you like Flea Market Rescue and you want to see more episodes like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell, that way you'll get notified every time I post a new video. Alright, I've been seeing this all over. It's a, It almost looks like a Fabergé egg, and so that's something that we're going to do. Um, I have this candlestick that is just really grody and disgusting. <laughs> So we're gonna have to clean it up, get the wax out of there. That was only $1.99. And then I got this egg at Hobby Lobby. I, I don't know, it says $1.49. I think I got it for 40% off. We're gonna put that on here. And then I ordered a mold because again, I've been seeing this pattern everywhere. I got this mold right here. Um, it says, you know, redesign and, uh, it has a crown and it has some, like, it looks like greenery. So we're going to use this on here and then we're going to put an image after we're all done right in the center. So it's going to kind of look like a Fabergé egg, a real fancy kind of Easter egg. So all right. So I cleaned this the best I could. This is very tarnished because you know, it's older. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this with some of this Gorilla Glue onto here. This is a two-part epoxy. You just squirt out equal amounts and then you're just gonna mix that with that toothpick When I did a lot of wood crafts, I always used epoxy. Epoxy was amazing. I mean, the only downside with epoxy is you have to wait for it to dry, but once it dries, that's it. <laughs> it is on there. It can break anywhere else, but it won't break where the epoxy is. Oh, and speaking of wood crafts, don't forget that I do have my scroll saw class available now. If you wanna up your game, go ahead and take that. I teach you everything. It's catered to the beginner, and I'll have more about that um, towards the end of the video, if you're interested. Okay, so I have the epoxy on here. I put it all around, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little hot glue to hold it in place. Because again, the epoxy does take a little while for it to dry. So if we put a little pox or a little hot glue, that'll hold it in place until the epoxy dries. All right, so now it is time to make our little pieces. We're gonna make the crown in this little leafy kind of thing here. I always use Magic Sculpt because it's just very durable. Um, this is a two-part epoxy resin. This is the resin. This is the hardener. You mix two equal parts and then you have your clay and it's again very durable. I love using it for furniture applique, all my applique pieces. So let's mix some clay and then we'll get our mold all ready. Now in order to get our mold ready, I always cornstarch it because otherwise your clay is going to really stick in there and you don't want that. So I'm gonna take a little cornstarch along with my stencil brush and we're just gonna add that all in there. We'll do the crown too. And then I always dump out, like I just flip it over and go like this because you want any excess, you don't want like too much. So now it's just powdered which is what you want. Now, I always wear gloves when I work with the Magic Sculpt because this white resin, this part here, until it's mixed, it is super sticky. 
So I like to wear gloves because as you can see, I've you know done a few pieces here and these gloves are all white. <laughs> But once I have it mixed, it's not bad. It's just mixing it. It's kind of tacky. So again, you're gonna get equal parts. I'm gonna take a little of the white resin. And then I'm gonna take a little of the hardener. I've been using this for years too for sculpting. I really love Magic Sculpt. It's just, again, really durable. So what you do is you take these two pieces, equal parts, you smush them together, and then you're just gonna kinda keep twisting them and blending them together. Now, when you don't see any more of this gray, you then you then and it's all completely white, then you know it had, it's mixed properly. So I'm just gonna keep doing that until it is completely white. All right, so I have it all mixed up here. And we're just gonna take little pieces of it. And we're just gonna push it into the mold. All right, I have all my clay in here. I'm just gonna smooth this out. All right, so I'm gonna pop this into the freezer because if you put it in the freezer for about 15 minutes, it'll just pop right out of this mold. You won't have to struggle with trying to get it out or you know, having it distort in shape. So let's do that. We're gonna put that right into the freezer for 15 minutes. All right, you guys, I just pulled this out of the freezer. It is freezing cold. We're just gonna flip that over and it should just come out with no problem. Same with this, should just pop right out. Now these are frozen right now, so they're gonna thaw out in just a few minutes. But this is one easy way of getting your pieces out of the mold. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this on here before it gets really like unfrozen. I'm gonna use a little of my Type Bond. This is the best glue when you're doing applique pieces. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this glue all on here. Yeah, as you can see, it's like not frozen anymore. So we really need to get that on there. All right, so I'm using that type on. We're gonna put that, we're gonna form that around our egg. Now we're gonna put the crown on top, but what I actually think I'm gonna do is make another piece and then put one on the front, one on the back, and then that should make like a full crown. So let's go ahead and make one more crown. So we're just gonna pop this into the freezer now. All right, so I took this one out of the freezer. So let's pop that one out. See how easy that comes out? That is the way to go, is put these in the freezer. All right, I took the other one and also put it in the freezer so that it'd be nice and cold and they would not be like all bending all over. So that's gonna make one whole crown. 
So as these start to thaw, we're gonna kind of bend them. Let's see if I can make an opening over here. Yep, that's gonna work. All right, we're gonna take a little of our type on again. I'm using a brush because the top was clogged. And we're just gonna brush it along the sides here so that we can bond both pieces. So I'm gonna put the two pieces together, I'm gonna line up the crown pieces. I'm gonna keep an opening there. We're just gonna try to seal both pieces here. All right, so that's a full crown, and we're gonna glue it to the top here. I'm gonna again use some of that tight bond to glue it to the top. All right, I think that looks good. We're gonna let that dry overnight, and then we're gonna paint it, and then we'll put like some kind of image here. All right, so our egg is completely dry. It looks so cool. And I think it is time to paint it. So we are gonna use a little of this Annie Sloan French linen. I think that's gonna look really awesome on there. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. We're just gonna let that dry. And while it's drying, we're gonna go find something to put right here in the center. All right, we're gonna use some of this Annie Sloan dark wax now that that's dried. I'm just gonna get into the detail. Okay, so I've got a lot of that great dark wax on there. I'm just gonna rub that in a little better. I think it's gorgeous. But we still need an image in the middle here, so we're gonna do something with that. Now to make the detail really pop, I have a little of this cocoa on my brush and I'm just gonna hit in various spots here. See how that's making that pop? You still have those rich tones, but when you hit the top part of the detail, the darkness below really like just shows even more. And it just really makes it look awesome. I wanna lighten this up just a little bit because I decided I'm gonna put one of my new transfers on there. Um, so I need it to be a little lighter. It just shows up better when it's lighter. So we're gonna use a little of this DIY paint. I'm gonna water it down, just kinda of like do a, a wash right in the middle there. So I have a little water on my brush 
And I'm just gonna kinda do that in the middle here. That kinda lightens it up. Let that dry. So I'm just adding a little of this dark wax around here. I'm blending it in just to kind of give it like a vignette kind of look to it. So we, we have the inside that we kind of did that wash on and then we added a little more wax which kind of gives it like a shadowy kind of effect. So I think that looks really cool and we will use our um, decal on there now. I have three decals out of that collection. And I think we're gonna use this one, but I might cut out the leaves. I think I just might want the rabbit, that's it. So let's do that right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the protective coating off of this. And then we're just gonna cut around. I, I just really feel this image is just a little too big for the egg, so we're not going to cut out any of this leafy part. We'll just probably cut like the banner. So you're just going to cut around your image. Again, we're not going to use any of the leafy part because I just feel like it's just too big. All right, so once you have that all cut out, then you're gonna, you know what, I'm just gonna cut just a teeny bit more around here. Okay, so once you have that, you're gonna peel off the backing. And these are really delicate, so just handle them with care. And then we're going to place that right in the middle. And then you're just going to smooth it down with your finger. Look how cute that looks. Now, if you don't want to get these decals, you don't have to. You could go to Graphic Fairy and then you can find an image and do like some kind of decoupage. So just know that you don't have to buy these. This is just what I wanted to do because I do have these new decals. So, but isn't this so cute? Very royal. All right, you guys, we're gonna make a little bunny. And so to make that little bunny, let's see. I'm gonna make one like this. And then it's just gonna be a little bit of a body. So we'll do like something like this. And yeah, maybe like that. Okay. And then we're gonna need some ears. So we'll do two like that. And then we're gonna need maybe a little arm. Okay, so we basically have our bunny pattern now. Okay, so we have our little pattern pieces, so we have Ossenberg fabric here. I like to use Ossenberg because I feel like Ossenberg 
is more a sturdy kind of fabric. So I'm just tracing with a pencil here on the fabric our little design. And then we're going to do two ears. One more over here. And then our bunny needs little arms. So we're gonna do two of these here. Now this fabric's doubled up just so you know. You want to do it on double fabric. Okay, so we got two little arms, two ears, and one body. We're going to sew on these lines, but first we're going to get rid of some of this fabric because it's just so much easier if you cut like what you're using. That way you don't have to rustle with the fabric. So we're going to sew this on the sewing machine. All you need to know is a straight stitch. You don't need to know anything more than that and you can do this. All right, we're going to start by sewing the body. We're going to sew all along here and back up and we're going to leave this open. You want to back stitch just to lock in your stitch and then you're just going to follow your line all the way around. going to back stitch again. Now we're going to go on to the little arms here. We're going to leave these open right at the top so that we can stuff them. So let's start with those. Put your needle in, go a few stitches, back stitch. And the only thing that we need to do next is just do the ears. Again, we're going to leave the opening here and there. Okay, so this is the first ear. Again, we're just leaving this one open. we have just sewn our bunny pieces so now we're gonna cut them out all right so we're gonna start cutting our bunny pieces out we're gonna cut right along this here that's our opening and we're gonna carefully cut our little bunny 
body out. Just want to follow the curve. Now I want to show you something. See right in between here? You are not going to get a good turn. Like we have to turn this inside out. It's going to kind of pucker there if you do not clip up to the stitching. You don't want to cut the stitching, but you want to cut up to it. That way when you go to turn, it'll turn really nicely for you. Now we're just going to cut out our little ears here. That's one. That's two. And then we need our little arms. So we're going to cut those out as well. And we're going to cut straight across where our line is that we're going to stuff them. So that's one arm. And that makes two arms. So now that we have all our little bu um, bunny pieces, we're going to turn them all. I have this tool turner for um, like if you're doing sewing dolls or anything you need to turn. I'll put a link to the tools. However, mine are really old, so yours are going to look so much better. Um, I've had these like for 20 years and when I did a lot of dowel making, this is the easiest way. I'm going to show you. You stick this right into, okay, this is the bunny ear, right? And then you take the stick that they provide. This is obviously not the stick. I've lost the stick. And you're just going to push and then look how easy. Boom. It's done. So I'm going to do that on all the pieces here. And then let's turn the body. This one you don't need the turning tools because it's a fairly bigger piece. And so there you go. There is the bunny. Now we're going to stuff it. Okay, so we have our polyfill here and we're just going to stuff the, the little arms and also the body, but not the ears. The ears will not be stuffed. So you just want to get that fiber fill down into the little arm. You can push that with a little stick, a dowel rod. Just have some patience. Now when you're stuffing the arms, you only want to go about halfway. You don't want to do all the way because then the arms will stick straight out. You want them to lay against the body. So I have the little arms done and we're just going to do the body. We're going to put a little stuffing in his head. And again, we're not stuffing the ears. We're going to put a little bit of wire in the ears and that'll make them bendable. Just want to stuff his head real good, especially. All right, so we have our little bunny all stuffed. We have his arms. We're going to sew his arms on, and we're also going to sew on his ears. All right, we're gonna take some of this wire here.
and we're going to stuff it inside the bunny's ear. All right, that's going to make our bunny's ear bend. So I have a little too much wire. You don't need that much wire. We're just going to snip that off. What I like to do is I like to poke some of this wire into his head and then we're going to stitch it on. All right, and we need one more piece of wire and we're going to do the same thing with the other ear. So I have a needle here and we're just going to hand stitch that on, making a little knot in there. So I like to flip the raw edge, you know, see how that's all jagged. We don't, we want to flip that in and then sew it on. And then with the little end that you have right here, you're gonna tie that, make a nice knot in it so it stays. So let's make a little knot. And then we'll go on to the second ear. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the second ear. You want to fold in that raw edge a little bit. Once you have those sewn on, you can kind of play around with them, make them look cute, fold them. Once they're sewn on, they're really good. Then just knot them off and then you can move on to the arms. Just like the ears, you're going to want to turn in the frayed edge because you don't want all those frayed edges showing. You want a nice finished edge. So this is the little arm and we turned in the edges and we're just going to sew back and forth till we have the arm all attached. And then we're going to do that with the second arm. And then I'm just going to take my needle across be careful not to poke yourself. Oops. <laughs> Be careful not to poke yourself. I'm going to bring the needle across and then we're going to sew on the other arm. Again, tuck in your edge. You want a nice finished edge.
All right, so I finished sewing the arms on. A little of the stuffing came out. We're just gonna put a little bit more back in him, but we don't wanna put it all the way to the edge because we're gonna sew him up on the sewing machine. Straight across, right here. So you, you wanna leave like just a little bit unstuffed. So I'm gonna put him underneath here and we're gonna sew the bottom of his body shut because we don't want all that fiber fill coming out when we display him. Any loose threads you see, just cut them off. And he is ready to be painted. Isn't he a little cutie? He's gonna be even cuter. Now everybody needs a carrot. So we're gonna make some carrots. All you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a triangle. The bigger the triangle, the bigger your carrots are gonna be. So for our rabbit, I think this is the perfect size. So we're gonna cut this out and we're gonna draw that on fabric and sew it up. Now we have our little carrot pattern. So we're just gonna draw, I wanna do four carrots. So I'm gonna draw four of these triangles here. Now let's sew these on the sewing machine, but again, we're just gonna get rid of some of this fabric here, just like we did with the bunny. And we're gonna sew that on the sewing machine. All right, so we have our triangles here. We're gonna leave this open right here, and we're gonna just sew along here. So let's do that on all of our triangles. Now, just so you know, normally you would sew with a different kind of foot, but I lost my foot at some point, so I just use this and it works fine. Anyway, we're done here with our carrots. So we're just cutting these out. We're gonna cut right across the top where we're gonna open it. Now, when you're doing this, you want the point to like you're gonna turn this inside out and if you have all this bulky fabric right here, it just doesn't turn properly. So what I do is I cut right up to the stitching. I don't cut on the stitching, but right up to it and I cut it like this. That way when I turn this, I know that it's all that bulk is gonna be gone and you'll get a nice point. So we're just gonna do that with the remainder three carrots. We're going to cut them out. All right, so we're going to turn the carrots here. All you're going to do is just turn them inside out. Take like a little dowel rod or, you know, the end of a paintbrush and just really push that in out so that you have it a little bit pointy. So we're going to do that on all of them. All right, so I am using polyfill. Polyfill is the best if you're gonna do any doll making, if you're stuffing anything, because it just does not bunch up. I've used it for over 20 years. It, believe me, I've tried them all. This is the best polyfill, uh, you know, best filler 
to do stuff like this. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stick a little bit of that into the end. Make sure that you get that right into the tip of the carrot. Otherwise, it's gonna be quite Um, how do you say that? I don't know. <laughs> Limp. Okay. And then we're just going to put a little more into there. All right. That's one. You want to leave about, I'd say a quarter inch because we're going to, we're going to gather that up. All right. All right, so now we have our carrots. We're gonna take some of this embroidery thread. It's like 34 cents. You can find it at, you know, Joann's or Michael's, really anywhere, Hobby Lobby. Um, I think even Walmart carries it. Yep, Walmart does carry it. So we're just gonna find the end here, use an embroidery needle. You can find those also at Joann's. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and out, in and out. All the way around. And then once we get to the other end, we're just gonna tie it off. Now leave it open just a tad because we're gonna put some greenery in there. So you wanna be able to get that in there. So we're just gonna tie it off, but not too tight because if you tie it too tight, then you're not gonna be able to get your greenery in there. And as you can see, we still have a little opening right here that we can put our greenery in. So I'm gonna just cut that and then we're gonna do that to the other three. All right, to paint the carrots, I have some water here and one of my paint glasses. And we're gonna add some instant coffee. You can pick up like a very, very cheap instant coffee at maybe Walmart. I put a lot of coffee in there. You know how some people tea stain? I coffee stain. So we're going to dip our brush in there and then we are going to just get these all coffeeed up. You could wear gloves because I'll tell you this will stain your hands. I mean I'm not worried about it but <laughs> just to let you know. I'm just gonna try to get up all the coffee here on this one. Okay, so they're pretty much all coffeeed up. Now we're gonna take our um, Burnt Orange by Americana. And we're gonna put some out and paint them. Now when you have this coffee on there, you really don't need a whole lot of paint. It just glides on there. See, 
I mean, I'm barely using any paint. Now I'm just going to add a little coffee on top of these. I want to tone this down a little. And we're going to let those dry overnight. So first things first, we're going to put coffee all over. All right, now that he's all coffee stained, we're gonna use this paint. Um, it's called Mississippi Mud. So he's all done, so we're gonna let him dry overnight. All right, so our little guy is all finished. He's painted, and we're just gonna take some of this embroidery thread. Again, you can get this embroidery thread for like 34 cents really anywhere. Joann's, Michael's, even Walmart. So, and I'm also using an embroidery needle, like a really long needle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make his eyes, and we're also gonna make his nose. So, what I like to do, so you can't see the string, is I like to go under one part that I can find, like maybe under the ear, yep. and just go in. And we're gonna come through one, we're gonna come through the part of his nose. Just be careful you don't poke yourself. And we're gonna come out about right here, and we're gonna make like a triangle for his nose. I need to go back a little bit more about right there all right so you want to pull your thread through pull enough through so that you're not stuck all right now we're gonna go back in right through the center of his nose and then we're gonna come out on the other end directly across from where we came out at don't worry if it punches in you can pull it back out like his nose see how this is doing that it's totally okay just get the needle in all right and pull through all right now as you can see his nose is kind of indented in but you know what that kind of really looks cute if we were to do this Okay, come out, we're gonna make a line down here. Come out a little lower on his chin. And we'll see if we wanna keep it indented or not. Then go back right where the triangle starts and you're gonna come out where his eye is, right on the side because we need to do the eyes next. Now we can pull this back really taut and see if it looks good. All right, I don't personally care for that, so we're just gonna take our needle and fluff his nose back up. There we go. I told you, you didn't need to worry about it being smashed in. <laughs> just take your needle, pull it out a little. Okay, so this part's all done. Now we need to work on the eye. So I am I have these little beads here and we're just gonna take two of them. I got these beads um, at Hobby Lobby in the bead aisle. 
and I'll show a little close up of it. So we're just gonna take two out of here. They're very small, they're just little beads, and those are gonna be his eyes. So we started over here, coming out one eye. I'm gonna thread one of these here. All right, my needle is just a little too big, so I'm gonna have to thread it through. Okay, so now that we have that through, you're gonna go back in real close to where the eye started, and we're gonna go out the other side. And pull really taut. We do wanna make an indention for this. See? Now, again, the, this needle is a little too big, the eye of it, so it's not gonna go through the, through the bead, so we're gonna need to do the same thing. Let's go ahead and just Go through there. If you have a smaller needle, this will not happen, but mine is just a little too big, the eye, so I have to do this. All right, so I got it through there. We're just gonna put this back on. And then we're gonna exit right through where we came in so we can tie a knot. Do it as close as you can so that we can hide that. Here we go. And we're gonna pull really taut because you wanna indent the eyes. All right, so let's just tie that off now. All right, and then we're just gonna snip this really close to his head so that you don't see the knot. And if you do have a little bit of that, just push it underneath. There has to be a little opening that you can push all this underneath and nobody will see it then. And there you go. Our carrots are completely dry and we're gonna use a little of this that I got from Hobby Lobby. So I'm just cutting off pieces that we can stick into the carrot. All right, we're just gonna hot glue that into our little opening that we made. So you just gotta find your opening and then we're gonna add that to it. Let's put a little hot glue down in there and then stick this down. Now these are even cute by themselves. You really don't even need to put them in the bag, but we're gonna make a whole little arrangement with our bunny and the carrots and the bag that we made. Now we're gonna make our bag out of an old flower sack that I got from Springfield. They're old, they're vintage, they have the stripe. I have a whole tutorial on how to make this bag and I will link it in the description so that you can watch it and make your own bag. All right, so we're gonna stuff this bag now, we don't want to use all this moss in there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few grocery bags down in to the bag just to fill it up. You can use like, you know, some paper, tissue paper that you would wrap a gift with. I just have these bags, so I just feel like that's the easiest thing here. Then I have this moss that I got at 
um, Hobby Lobby and it was $4.99. So we're going to add a little of that to there. So you don't have to use a whole bunch if you stuff it with bags. And I personally like a little bit of green to it. So this bag has some green moss in there too. So I'm just going to kind of put that right on top, which will give it some color. And now, remember our little bunny? We're gonna stuff our bunny in there. Kind of put him in the middle there. And then we have our carrots, so you're gonna wanna stuff some carrots in there too. This provides a lot of green color to it. It looks really springy and Easter. I had one more right in the front. He's just surrounded full of carrots. I think that's looking really cute. Um, I might add just a little bit more moss around, around him and the carrots. All right. I finished the bag with a hang tag and I think that he is just so stinking cute. Well, if you didn't get enough of her last week, she's back again with some more Easter ideas for you. I picked up this little sifter. I believe it's from Target, like when they have their three and five dollar sale items by the door. But I picked this up at Goodwill for uh, 99 cents. And it was brand new. I even had to cut the tags off. It's a cute, just little kitchen uh, sifter. So when I found this, I had an idea, because since it's a kitchen thing, I had this um, fern that's just in a glass bottle. So I set that in there and I thought, well, let's put some carrots. I mean, after all, it is a sifter and I thought um, these little seed packages with um, carrots on them, I also picked up that and I stuck that inside the sifter. And I thought, if I had the little tag, which I don't, I would put on here uh, carrot cake. Because now you can grow your own carrots and make your, your own carrot cake and use the sifter too to make it. I'm sure a lot of people out there have really done uh, decoupage. Um, I'm just gonna show you a little bit of my version that I thought was really cute for Easter. So what I did is I went to the dollar store and I found this pretty napkin that had the Easter eggs and flowers on them and the, the colors were just really pretty. And um, so napkins uh, usually have three layers. This one only had two. So you wanna separate the napkin because you're only gonna use that top one. And if it tears, it really doesn't matter because you're gonna be ripping up this napkin anyway for this project. This part, I mean, you can just throw this away. So what I do is, you can cut these out if you want, but then you get too uh, crisp edge. So the best thing to do is just tear it. And tear it pretty close. You don't want a lot of white onto um, your decoupage. But if, if you do get uh, some white, 
you can always add another piece of your colored napkin over it and that will cover that white part. So I'm just showing you, this is what I would do, is just kind of tear it, doesn't matter how, if it tears, rips or whatever, don't worry about it because the Mod Podge, which is in the matte finish, so it's not real shiny. So these here I picked up at Dollar Tree. They're just styrofoam uh, eggs. And I think you get eight or six in a package. They come in large and small. These are the large ones. And um, so it, the Mod Podge is very sticky. So your, your hands are gonna get a little bit sticky. They'll stick to the egg or the napkin. You might uh, have a tear. You Don't worry about it because you're gonna take another piece of your flowers. You're just gonna do it over and nobody would ever know. Um, this is the finished result of that egg, which I think turned out really pretty for Easter. If you made a bunch of these or if you've got different kinds of napkins or whatever, you could do a whole bunch and put them in a real pretty um, porcelain bowl or, um, you know, any decoration that you have around your house. So this is what I do. First of all, I put down a piece of parchment paper because this stuff, you don't want it to really get onto your table because it, it really dries hard. I take a little piece of uh, tin foil squirt some in and then what I do is I just start tearing my napkin. Like I said, I, I try not to get a lot of white in there, but if I do, I'm not concerned about it because I can always cover it up. You can have a lot, a lot of little pieces laying around, but that's okay, you'll use them. Same thing here, you just want to tear them up. Okay, now that we have a start of a napkin, you might need um, one or two, whatever it needs to cover your uh, egg. Just put some Mod Podge on the egg. And then take one of your napkins and just put it on. And then apply another coat over. You may get some wrinkles, but you know, when you brush it through, a lot of the wrinkles come out and if you have a few, it really doesn't matter because it still looks great. But that's the start of how you do it. So you just wanna continue on. Put a little bit more Maj Paj on your egg. and just kind of overlap and brush it on. And when you get a variety of colors in your napkins, it there's um, a lot, you know, that you can have the different colors going through. And this dries um, matte, so it's not real shiny and I think it really turns out really cute. Now, um, same thing, just keep adding some Mod Podge, pick up another one, place it. Now this was a little bit, I left it too far apart. It's very delicate, but like I said, if it tears, it really doesn't matter because you can uh, smooth this out with your decoupage, um, Mod Podge and your brush. OK, 
okay just continue around and just keep adding your uh, napkin that's pretty much it it's um, actually it's it's kind of fun to do this it's it is relaxing because there's no um, right or wrong and um, I think you get a real pretty um, results when you're done, especially if you use a pretty napkin. Now you can make, you know, a dozen of these eggs and put them all into one bowl or whatever, but this is my little version of what I did with that one egg that I made. I picked up this little white uh, wooden basket I think I paid a quarter at a garage sale, just added some moss, some greenery, and then just placed the egg in. And this is how the egg turned out. And I think it really came out cute with the colors. Uh, this little tin bunny has a cup behind here so you can add your greenery or carrots, which I'll show you what I'm gonna do with him. And I picked him up at a garage sale for 50 cents, which I thought was really, really cute and reasonable. So I'm gonna show you what to do with him. Greenery again, just add it to the back of the bunny here. And then these carrots, it's been a while, so I really don't know where I picked these up, but I thought they were really, really cool. They're yarn, and what I did with them is I just stuffed them into the back with the greenery. And voila, I don't think you can get any simpler than that, and I think he's really, really cute. Uh, last week, uh, we have a, it's a consignment store where everybody brings their things and they have a booth. Well, I went there just to see what they had and I ran across this cute little bench. Usually you'll find like a chair, but this is a bench and I thought it was so adorable and the color is just perfect for Easter and spring. So when I got it home, I started thinking about what do I have that's going to look cute on the bench? Well, last year I went to a garage sale and I found these really cute little girl and boy bunnies. And I thought, yeah, let's put them on the bench. So, well, before I did that, I had this greenery and I just kind of nestled it around hanging over the bench and then I put the bunnies like so and then I had I like these flowers whenever I see them at Goodwill Salvation Army garage sale because they're actually like paper and they look really realistic so I thought okay let's put some little flowers behind these bunnies and then Kelly has these Easter tags and this one uh, hippity hop which I thought was beautiful to put on this bench representing the little bunnies so let me just attach this her tags are wonderful I really recommend you go into her Etsy shop and purchase some of these tags because it just gives it a nice finish and they really look adorable. So what I want to tell you too, the garage sales are going to be starting soon. Start hitting them. Go there. Look for seasonal things. I know that June, July, you're not thinking about Christmas or Easter or anything like that but when you run across because I found these in July but I kind of thought yeah there's a good idea for them and I got them for like a dollar each 
So start looking for your seasonal stuff. Put it to the side, because when those seasons come, this is what you could end up with for your spring decoration on your porch, in your home, or, or wouldn't it be a wonderful gift for somebody? And it really did not cost a lot of money. Happy Easter, everyone, from Joanne and Kelly here at Flea Market Rescue. We hope that you have a wonderful holiday and we hope that you enjoyed all the thrifting ideas we gave you in this episode. Have a great holiday and hope to see you again. I mentioned the scroll saw class earlier. If you want to learn a new skill and up your craft game, this is the class to take. I start with the beginner and teach you everything you need to know. Here's a little preview. that's it for this episode of flea market rescue i hope you enjoyed the episode and if you want to see more episodes of flea market rescue make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell i'm kelly sherry and this has been flea market rescue